good morning today we will study uh, about the different types of preservation of fossils that is uh, how the ancient organic beings or their uh, uh, organisms parts they are preserved and how did we uh, what are the different forms by which we uh, identified those ancient beings in the rock record so that is called different states of preservation of fossils now if i just want to point out what are the different conditions of different uh, states of preservation of fossils uh, a fossil can be preserved in either six of these one first original hard parts that is the all the organisms which have hard parts their hard parts remain uh, preserved as it is that means no change is there external and internal mold third is cast or recrystallization uh, fourth one is impression and compression uh, fifth one is petrifaction or impregnation and the last one is permineralization or encrustation now I'll come into detail of these uh, preservation states one by one first the original hard parts now hard part means uh, the uh, hard uh, exo or endoskeletons of an organisms for most of the invertebrate uh, group of animals the hard part is their exoskeletons whereas many invertebrate uh, organisms they have hard parts as internal skeletons and most of the vertebrates they have their hard parts as internal skeletons that means the bones or some other kinds of representative that i come into detail later and these hard parts they are the most uh, favorable part of an organic body which is more easily preserved or more prone to preserve in the rock record because after an uh, after the death of an organisms the readily decomposable part of an organism is their soft mass the tissues the muscles they are easily decomposed uh, by the decomposing organisms and only thing remain is the hard part they are a decomposition the decomposition of hard part is very very um, prolonged or very very uh, less compared to the decomposition of soft mass so hard parts have more chance to be preserved now the materials by which these hard parts that means the skeletal part of an organisms is composed of uh, those are it may be a silica that is sio2 calcite aragonite that these two are the polymorphic forms of calcium carbonate chitin and the last one is chloroprotein these two are, are a complex protein now coming to the first one that is silica the silica is a uh, highly resistant material uh, which forms the um, external skeleton of many uh, small organisms like sponge foraminifera and mostly these are the exoskeletons and here you can see some of the uh, exoskeletons of different foraminifera uh, look at the design of those exoskeletons so all these exoskeletons are made up of sio2 that means silica and um, this silicate uh, silica exoskeletons are very uh, strong and very good uh, taste material that means very good hard part material uh, which can be preserved in the uh, rock record second is the uh, calcite and aragonite that is the two polymorphic form of calcium carbonate and now as you know that uh, calcium carbonate that is calcite is the most stable polymorphic 
organisms hard parts as aragonitic in composition but you know that this polymorphic form of calcium carbonate is not uh, very stable form in the natural condition of today so although it is unstable but many organisms have their skeleton uh, composed of aragonite now so calcium carbonate has two polymorphic forms and uh, those two polymorphic uh, forms are calcite and the shells or the hard parts of echinodermata belemnites their hard parts is made up of uh, calcium carbonate that is calcite whereas the hard parts of uh, bivalves uh, corals uh, gastropods uh, their hard parts is made up of aragonite so basically these are the two polymorphic forms of calcium carbonate next is the chitin it's basically a uh, complex uh, organic substance made up of carbon nitrogen hydrogen oxygen uh, it is known as polysaccharide and although this chitin is basically this chitinous material is a soft uh, compared to the uh, hard part composition of uh, silica and calcium carbonate so it is not as much durable as the uh, calcite or silica uh, but although many organisms like the arthropods like the cockroaches many insects uh, this is an extinct arthropod known as trilobite so all the uh, group into the same uh, higher taxonomic level that is arthropod the arthropod hard parts um, these hard parts that is the external skeleton they are made up of this uh, chitinous material so it is not as much hard or as much durable like silica or calcium carbonate but uh, it is the composing material of many organic groups hard parts next is the scleroprotein again another complex uh, substance uh, substances like keratin collagen those are fall into this group and these are basically the fibrous proteins mind it these are fibrous proteins and they form the skeletons of graptolites it is an extinct animal group uh, molluscan also have this fibrous protein um, particularly if you can see this is a common bivalve which we uh, readily found in our uh, banks in the river, river banks or in the um, sea beaches and if you closely observe that these bivalves are basically of two valves joined in this portion by a soft tissue this black portion this fibrous tissue of bivalve is basically known as ligament and this ligament is known as uh, uh, this ligament is the made up of this scleroprotein so although it is again a uh, fibrous protein uh, which is very uh, soft and flexible and also not as much durable as silica and uh, calcite or calcium carbonate but uh, many organisms uh, in their exoskeletons or in their endoskeletal part that is the basically these hard parts are the protective cover of an organism to protect it uh, from the external affairs from the um, dangers what it face in the nature also the hard parts makes the organisms more stable it gives their physical stability to stand up or to move uh, like that so these hard parts um, are made up of these different kinds of um, minerals or different kinds of complex proteins in different groups of organisms 
and also uh, as you can see in previous slide i show you that the many bivalves are made up of their hard parts these cells their hard parts is made up of aragonite and along with this aragonite they also bear this complex protein scleroporin so one organism can have more than one uh, type of hard part material okay. now, now coming to the next uh, preservation uh, type or next state type of state of preservation that is known as uh, mold and cast so in this case in case of mold or in case of cast the original organisms or the original hard part of the organism is not preserved so the original thing is lost what we get is the impression of the organism now when an organism after a depth uh, death it uh, lie down on the uh, sedimentary bed or sediment surface then the external imprint external surface of the organism is uh, imprinted on the sedimentary host rock so in this sedimentary rock we get as you see in this picture in this sedimentary rock here the original organism is not preserved original hard part is not preserved only thing we get that is the uh, impression of the external part of an organism so this is called external mold the impression of the external part of the organisms preserved in the host sedimentary rock okay and when the internal part as you know that many organisms like these gastropods bivalves their internal part is void after their death the soft part decomposed so the all the internal portions is basically a void as you can see this gastropod is basically a uh, tube like form which is coiled around an axis here you can see it's a tubular form with coiled around some axis so this portion all the internal portion is basically void after the decomposition of the soft mass now if somehow some soft sediment infill this internal void portion of the gastropod or any other organisms so those sediments they bear the shape size of the internal part of the organisms so after that this we get that is the imprint of the internal portions of the organisms so this is called internal mold suppose uh, if we take an example from the uh, our daily life suppose we lie on the we human being uh, after our death we lied on a uh, sand surface so on the sand surface our external morphology our external shape size that will be imprinted now if someone take our body from that surface so what we get that is the original organism is not there but the external impression of the human body remains on that uh, sediment surface so that is called external mold which is the external impression of the organic body preserved on the host sedimentary rock so external mold is always get we get in the host sedimentary rock at the same time after an organisms if some if um, we get uh, back to our previous example that is the human body so after our exam uh, after our death we have many uh, openings that is our mouth ear nose and if somehow uh, some sediments uh, get into those openings into the inside of our body so those sediments when they deposited inside our body they will take the shape and size about the internal voids of our body so after the decomposition of the of our skin what we get the sediment infilled portion taking the size and shape 
of the internal portion of our body so that is called internal mold okay now the next preservation type is cast what is cast cast form when both the external form external mold and internal mold occurred and after that the hard part of the organisms is dissolved by some way so according to the formation of internal mold and external mold if we go back to our previous example the human body so after our death we lie down on a sediment surface on the sediment surface there forms the external mold some sediments um, got into inside our body and they take the internal shape uh, size of our body so they form internal mold so after my death in suitable condition external mold happen internal mold happen now if the skin of a human body became decomposed so that a thin portion which is previously the skin of the human body that portion become void and on the one half of that skin there is there was in external mold on the other half there was internal mold now if the skin is decomposed or destroyed by some way so there forms a void and if that void is later filled by some other chemical precipitation then that bears the original skin uh, shape or uh, size but that is not the original one it looks like the original one but not the original one then we call them as cast if we go into this uh, pictorial example suppose this is an original uh, bivalve so this bivalve is uh, composed of this hard part this hard part uh, these two and the internal uh, soft organs that is the soft muscles so what can happen after its death it will be deposited uh, or it will be lie down on the sediment surface and covered in all sides by the sediments then immediately after its death uh, all the soft parts along with the hard parts all things are decomposed in this picture what you can say that all the soft parts and hard parts all things are decomposed okay so only thing you will get that is the external mold in the sediment that is in this host sediment you will get the external mold that is no internal mold is there so the entire portion is now void and this void is by some way later filled by some other kinds of material you can clearly see the different um, sediment or mineral structure in this picture that is not similar to this one that is not similar to this one this is different so this void is later filled up by some other kinds of uh, sediments or other kinds of precipitations or other kinds of material so it will take the shape and size of the original one but it is not the original one so it is representative of the original one but not the original one so then we call them it as cast another way after the death of the organism when it's got deposited in the sediment surface it will be buried it will be covered by uh, the sediments in all uh, sides now the what i previously told that after the death of an organisms the decomposition of soft part is very rapid compared to hard part so in this picture you can see that this soft mass this soft mass is readily decomposed so there is no soft mass these internal organs only thing but the hard parts they remain as it is you can see the structures of these hard parts are still as it is 
So the soft part of the organism got decomposed, but the hard part remains as it is. Okay. So what we get in fossil record, external mold in the host sedimentary rock, the original hard part of the organism and the internal portion if filled by uh, some other kinds of sediments or some other kinds of material that will take the shape of the internal portion so this is internal mold so this is internal mold uh, in the host sedimentary rock we get the external mold that is the impression of the external surface of the sediment and mind it this external mold is always the negative impression so if if there is a elevated part in the shell suppose this one this elevated part occurs in the cell so in the host sedimentary rock you will get it as a depression so external mold is always the negative impression of the original one okay um, so in this case you will get three types of preservation state of an organisms uh, external mold original hard part as well as internal mold now after this part suppose the formation of external mold happen formation of internal mold happen and now the hard parts being dissolved as you see in this picture the hard parts being dissolved so here lies a void between the external mold and internal mold a void exists a vacant portion now if this vacant portion is filled up by some sorry this arrow is basic should be in the reverse direction uh, if this void portion is later filled up by some other kinds of precipitation or other kinds of material then they it will take the size and shape of the like the original hard part but the structure of the internal structure of this hard part is changed you can clearly see that this their internal structure these triations are completely changed here here is it's a uh, mesh like pattern whereas here you can see some uh, striations so this now this portion the replaced hard part takes the shape size like the original hard part but it is not the original so in this case this one is this portion this replaced portion is also known as cast okay so external mold is always found in the host sedimentary rock and that is the negative impression of the original feature it bears the external characters of the original organism internal mold bears the internal uh, features of the original organisms and cast is the replaced or recrystallized uh, hard part material of the original organisms so that is external mold internal mold and cast now the hard part uh, external mold internal mold cast these terminologies are basically uh, applicable for uh, animal group of organ animal uh, groups for plants for their preservation uh, we use a different types of nomenclature different types of preservation states uh, that is known as first that is known as impression and compression in case of impression it is basically the imprints of the external features of a plant and in this case uh, the original material is not preserved as you can see in this picture that is it clearly demarcates or it clearly indicates that it is an uh, impression of a plant leaf you can see all the mid veins the secondary veins so all things are clearly identified but the original leaf material that is not preserved okay so it be a, how did you identify that whether original material is preserved or not if the original plant material is preserved then with time uh, those plant materials they are converted to carbon 
so if there is uh, there was original uh, leaf present of the plant then with time that plant uh, material that will convert it to the uh, carbon so this carbon clearly distinguishable by its color from the host sedimentary rock so there must be a color contrast between the fossil and the host sedimentary rock but here in this case for this impression type of preservation it is just the imprints of the original plant material so no case of preservation of original plant material so that is why only the imprints of the plant material as preserved in the host sedimentary rock so here you can see that clearly that there is no color difference between the fossil impression and the host sedimentary rock okay in the next type of preservation that is the compression here the original plant material is preserved and that is compressed okay so here you can see in this picture you can see that the, there is a clear color distinction between the uh, fossil plant and the host sedimentary rock the host sedimentary rock is much lighter in color whereas the plant material you can see um, these small leaves these are much darker that means after the uh, deposition of this plant leaf this plant leaf is now becomes carbon so this carbon becomes much darker color compared to the uh, host sedimentary rock so there is a color distinct color different difference between the fossil uh, remain and the host sedimentary rock in case of compression that means the original plant material is there or was there which is later converted to carbon another thing as it is compression that means uh, it's converted uh, to this kind of preservation due to some overburden pressure because compression is related to the overburden pressure so these kinds of fossil preservation is commonly identified in three dimensional form that means all the three axes x y and z these three dimensions can be identified in these kinds of uh, preservation states of plant remains whereas impressions here as it is the only the imprints of the plant material here you this kinds of preservation is two dimensional so in case of impression that is the only the imprints of the plant remain in case of compression here the plant material is present but uh, with time during fossilization the original plant material is converted to some carbonaceous carbonaceous material next is the petrifaction this petrifaction process is very interesting one uh, you will commonly uh, heard or commonly see these kinds of ancient tree trunks which are now uh, becomes very solid which is now converted to a rock but you can clearly identify the uh, structures the tissues uh, of this plant stem and you can easily identify them as that they are the tree trunks now what happened uh, to uh, to formulate to form these kinds of preservation states the tree trunks uh, or in case of animal groups many animal bones but mostly this is the tree trunks they are highly porous that means within their tissues there are lots of open spaces within the xylem phloem and other kinds of tissues there are lots of open spaces after the death of the uh, organism or after the death of the tree uh, if a mineral rich fluid is passing over these uh, plant bodies or passing over these organic bodies then those pore spaces within the tissues of the plants they are infilled or um, by this uh, mineral rich water and within these void spaces some kinds of precipitation will occur as you can see in the right hand picture these are the plant tissues you can clearly see that there are 
common arrangement they are long fibrous tissues these are most probably the xylems and phloems of the plants so along these tissues there are also many void spaces empty spaces so after the death of this plant these empty spaces is facing some flow of mineral rich water and that mineral rich water when passing over this uh, plant body it will precipitate some kind some minerals within these empty spaces the most common uh, precipitation minerals are the calcite and silica now the entire thing becomes very solid and all the tissues structures of the tree trunks they are preserved so this process of preservation of plant remains this is known as petrifaction or it is often known as impregnation the next one is the uh, permineralization or encrustation uh, this is basically the uh, partial replacement uh, of the original material what it forms that often uh, a secondary material uh, replaces the original material or original hard part after the death of the organisms and most common mineral is pyrite which sometimes replaces calcite and you know that pyrite is uh, not formed in all the um, all environments for deposition of pyrites it requires uh, some kinds of reducing environment uh, so that is why it is not found in all the fossil uh, records so in this case um, either some portion of the original material is replaced by other kinds of material or sometimes um, these kinds of minerals pyrite or other things they form a coating uh, over the uh, organism's outer shell or over the outer part of the organisms and that looks that enhances uh, the preservations of uh, those organisms and uh, this process is known as permineralization so this is basically a coating encrustation means coating over the original one or coating over the fossil remains okay uh, now the coating of pyrite type material as you can uh, you know that the um, color of pyrite is like somewhat golden in appearance now the coating of uh, pyrite over these kinds of cephalopods uh, is look becomes more heavenly um, it becomes more precious as you know as i already told you that the uh, pyrite coating or pyrite precipitation is not occurred in all environments so for precipitation of pyrite it requires uh, somewhat reducing conditions so only in very few places or very few um, locations these kinds of pyrite coatings over the uh, fossils are reported in himalayan terrain um, in the jurassic uh, rocks these uh, cephalopods are found and they are found uh, coated by this uh, pyrite mineral that means pyrite precipitation is happened there so these kinds of pyrite coating over these cephalopod cells uh, makes it a heavenly appearance and as it is rarely happened so people thought that uh, these are some kinds of representation of god and this is most commonly known as saligram shila the uh, one type uh, representation of lord vishnu uh, but the actual thing is that uh, it is not an heavenly thing 
uh, it forms in art it forms in nature uh, whenever these kinds of cephalopods these kinds of coiled uh, organisms uh, after their death they becomes fossilized and in some reducing condition some pyrite coating happened over their cells and that uh, forms this type of preservation of organisms so as it is rare it is not found because these kinds of organisms is found in many other places of india it will they are found in the uh, gujarat areas they are found in the tamil nadu areas uh, but in those areas in gujarat and tamil nadu these kinds of pyrite coating is never found till date whereas a particular um, bed or a particular uh, portion of the um, himalayan succession in the jurassic times jurassic cephalopods they are commonly found here in the himalayan terrain they are commonly found these kinds of pyrite coatings over these uh, cephalopod cells uh, so that is why people believe that uh, this is a heavenly thing and they believed it as a representative of lord vishnu that is the salikram shila but that's a natural uh, phenomenon or natural type of preservation of uh, organism now whenever you try to identify so previously i told you all the uh, six types of preservation of organisms that is uh, in original hard part uh, mold and cast uh, next is the impression and compression uh, impregnation there is a petrifaction uh pyritization that is the replacement process so all these um, six types of preservation states of organisms are discussed now whenever you observe something in the rock record uh, our first natural uh, instinct is to say these kinds of structures say uh, fossils it looks like a fern type uh, plant remains in the host sedimentary rock but whenever you say something about the fossil you must be very cautious because what it looks like a uh, prehistoric remains of fern like plants in this picture uh, it is not at all a plant remains it's a mineral deposit called dendrite that is a manganese uh, mineral deposit called dendrite found in the sedimentary rock so these kinds of uh, impressions of any mineral deposits they will um, certainly misguide you to call it a fossil so in this case you must be very careful to call it a fossil whenever you call something a fossil uh, about their different preservation states or about what type of fossil is there uh, you must be very careful whether this is the original one or it is some kind of mineral deposits takes the uh, shape and size and gives us a false impression of like a fossil okay so here uh, we are in this class we are mainly concentrating on the uh, hard parts of the organisms but along with the hard parts in rare instances um, also the soft part of the organisms is preserved um, but as i earlier told you the preservation of soft part of organisms is very very um, negligible that means their preservation is very rare because after the death and of an organisms the most easily decomposed or most readily decomposed part of an organisms is the uh, soft part uh, hard part is more durable compared to the soft part organisms so that is why the soft part soft bodied organisms is rarely preserved or the organisms in which both soft part and hard parts are preserved commonly 
the soft part preservation is rare hard part preservation is more easy and more uh, prone um, along with this uh, original body fossils that is the soft part and hard part we previously discussed about the traces of our organisms those are also preserved known as stress fossils and the chemical uh, traces of organisms those are known as chemical fossils so these are the main way of different types of fossils and different preservation states of fossils okay so thank you uh, go through the books of um, Clarkson, um, Anish Rai. Uh, these books will help you to identify these things. And uh, if you found any difficulty regarding uh, these, uh, regarding um, this class, you can contact with me. Thank you.